One would have expected him to go through the roof, to order heads to roll, to launch an immediate investigation. And he couldn't even be bothered. As for Major General Cannon, he was similarly apathetic, if not more so, about the plight of Mohammed Jawad. It is an absolute disgrace that this officer has been promoted twice after allowing a suicidal teenager to be subjected to this kind of abuse in his detention facility. It is my recommendation that charges be preferred against Major General Cannon under the UCMJ for cruelty, maltreatment and abuse, dereliction of duty and violation of a lawful order at the earliest opportunity. He was the commander of the detention group. He completely and utterly failed to prevent the flagrant abuse of a detainee under his protection. It is high time that someone in a position of authority be held accountable and not just the guards who were carrying out the orders this time. Why was Mohammed Jawad tortured? Why did military officials choose a teenage boy who had attempted suicide in his cell just five months earlier to be the subject of this sadistic sleep deprivation experiment? Not that anything would justify such treatment, of course, but at least in the case of the other detainees known to have been subjected to sleep deprivation, they were believed to possess critical intelligence that might save American lives. Unfortunately, we may never know. I've asked to speak to the guards who actually carried out the program, and I've been denied. In the absence of information to the contrary, which the government would surely provide if it existed, we are left to conclude that it was simply gratuitous cruelty. The government admits that Mohammed Jawad was treated improperly, but offers no remedy. We won't use any evidence derived from this maltreatment, they say, but they know that there was no evidence derived from it because the government didn't even bother to interrogate him after they tortured him. Exclusion of non-existence evidence is not a remedy. Dismissal, which I ask for today, is a severe sanction, but it is the only sanction that might conceivably deter such conduct in the future. February 7, 2002. America lost a little of its greatness that day. We lost our position as the world's leading defender of human rights, as the champion of justice and fairness and the rule of law. But it is a testament to the continuing greatness of this nation that I, a lowly Air Force Reserve Major, can stand here before you today with the world watching without fear of retribution, retaliation, or reprisal and speak truth to power. I can call a spade a spade and I can call torture, torture. Today, Your Honor, you have an opportunity to restore a bit of America's lost luster to bring back some small measure of the greatness that was lost on February 7, 2002, to set us back on a path that leads to an America which once again stands at the forefront of the community of nations in the arena of human rights. Sadly, this military commission has no power to do anything to the enablers of torture, such as John Yu, Jay Bybee, Robert Delahunty, Alberto Gonzalez, Douglas Feith, David Addington, William Haynes, Vice President Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld. For the jurisdiction of military commissions is strictly and carefully limited to foreign war criminals, not the homegrown variety. All you can do is try to send a message, a clear and unmistakable message, that the U.S. really doesn't torture, and when we do, we own up to it, and we try to make it right. I have provided you with legal authority for the proposition that you have the power to dismiss these charges. I can't stand before you and say that you are legally required to do so, but I can say that it is a moral imperative to do so. And I ask that you do so. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that was the closing argument I gave. It did not 
result in the uh, remedy that I sought. The case was not dismissed. However, the judge did issue an important ruling on the case. Uh, he ruled that he did have the power to dismiss the case, which was something that the government had vehemently opposed. He said that torture was a basis for dismissing charges. He found that there was adequate alternative remedies, however, such as giving sentence credit, uh, extra sentence credit against any ultimately uh, ultimate sentence that, that my client might receive, uh, exclusion of evidence, uh, barring of any witnesses that might have been involved in, in torture and, and other lesser remedies. He did find that the treatment was cruel, abusive, and inhumane, and almost found that it was torture. He said that it was designed to seriously disrupt the, the mental senses of my client, which is essentially the definition in, in the Convention Against Torture, but said that it was not necessary to determine whether in fact it was torture because he wasn't going to dismiss the charges anyway. Um, the case continues against Mohammed Jawad. It's the only trial scheduled on the docket for trial uh, prior to the inauguration of President-elect Obama. It's set for the 5th of January 2009. Um, I'd be happy to entertain any questions at this time.